What is all this stuff? Join me at the Orchid Hut for some budget-friendly ideas for growing orchids. Welcome to the Orchid Hut. My name is Dana and thank you for joining me today in this video about budget-friendly ideas for orchid supplies that you will need in order to be successful with your orchid growing hobby. Now, before we begin with the ways to save money on orchid supplies and things that you will need, I want to first start off by saying there are two places where you really should buy and get the best that you can afford. And the first one of those things is good media. You should buy the best media that you can for growing your orchids because that's a critical component to being successful. And the other place that you should not skimp, in my opinion, is on the fertilizer. So if you have found a good fertilizer that works for you, stick with that. The media and the fertilizer are two of the most critical components for growing your orchids. And then beyond that, you can look for creative cost-saving ways to save money on orchid growing supplies. Now, this video is going to be divided into several sections, um, just for the purposes of being a little bit organized. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. This video might be a tiny bit longer than my usual videos, so grab a snack, grab a beverage of your choice, or both, and sit back and enjoy the rest of the video. So in this video, I'm going to give you a lot of different options. Oftentimes, you can repurpose things that you already have in your house, and when you repurpose, these supplies are free. They're no additional cost to you. But you can also find less expensive options by shopping online. So as we progress through the video, I'm always going to give you the free way that you can repurpose things around the house. And then if you can't repurpose those things, then I will give you a um, at least less expensive way to acquire certain items that you might need. And what I have done for this video is down in the description, I've put a lot of Amazon shopping links where you can purchase some of these things if you are interested. Full disclosure here, I may get a tiny little commission if you shop from one of my links. So if you choose to do that, thank you in advance. And you know, it's up to you whether you want to try to collect and repurpose from things in your house or whether you want to shop um, in a less expensive way. Let's get started with the first category of orchid supplies. The first category of orchid supplies that we're going to talk about today are different types of potting containers. Now, the very first thing that I like to do to save money in this area is to collect um, takeout containers, deli containers, and those items are completely free as long as they are sized appropriately for planting orchids. So let me give you some examples. Um, these containers I save all the time. I get uh, Chinese takeout soup in these and you know they're perfect for a smaller to medium sized orchid. If you compare this to one of the real orchid pots they're very very similar in size and this is well suited for you know a, a novelty orchid or even a medium sized orchid that still needs to grow its root system. Now, when you use one of these, you do have to take either a drill or a wood burning tool and, you know, make your drainage holes in the bottom and, you know, make some 
air holes in the sides of the pot if you choose to do that. And I collect these all the time and you can even use the lid as a little saucer, you know, if you want to protect your countertop or your tabletop from a little bit of um, water dripping out of the pot. Now, this is a slightly different um, container, but it was one that I repurposed and it did not have any drainage holes in the bottom. But when I repotted this catacetum orchid, all I did was burn holes um, in the place where I wanted them to be for this particular repotting. So this container was not an orchid pot to begin with, it was just something that I repurposed. Um, one of the things you'll find is that a lot of repurposed pots may not be the thick, high quality plastic that an orchid pot is, but sometimes, like in the case of the soup containers, because they have to hold something hot, Really, the quality of this pot is almost as good as the thickness of, you know, a real orchid pot. And extra benefit here, these are relatively clear so that you can see the root system uh, just like in a clear orchid pot. Now, one of the other things that you can use, and this is another takeout container, um, you can plant orchids in these that are more shallow rooted, like a bulbophyllum or maybe even um, certain cattleya type orchids that like to send their root systems out in a horizontal way. You would just need to again drill or burn the drainage holes in the bottom. You can use the lid as a saucer and this can work perfectly well for an orchid that is more shallow rooted. And uh, just save all kinds of lids as saucers. And then, um, this one was a cherry granola container. So this is, you know, like the perfect sized orchid pot. Just add the drainage holes. You may not be able to reuse this one because it is a bit um, more flimsy, but you know, you could pot an orchid in this for a year or two. It would be perfectly fine. And then, um, also from the dollar store, you can get um, colanders that have a lot of drainage. And again, if you have like a bulbal phylum that's more shallow rooted and you have a really large specimen, it might like to grow in this. You could even drill some holes and you know turn it into a hanging basket if you uh, wanted to. Here's a, a smaller option in red. Again, just a small colander with a lot of drainage holes and uh, any type of shallow rooted orchid can be grown in this container that just costs a dollar. Now, one of the other things that I have done with dollar store purchases is um, funnels. So if you'll have a look at this Neophoenicia moss mound here, the thing that keeps that moss mound upright and straight and keeps it from losing its shape, especially as I water it, is just an inverted funnel I cut the top off and then I build the moss mound around the funnel and it helps that um, stay, you know, in its best shape. Okay, so that's our first set of ideas for orchid pots. There are some links in the description below if you would like to purchase uh, deli containers. Uh, the only thing that I would um, give a little word of caution there is that sometimes you have to buy in bulk. So, you know, be careful with how many deli containers you're actually purchasing and whether or not, you know, you want to spend the money for that number of containers. Okay, so next up is a little bit about uh, planting in wooden slat baskets. You know, um, if you purchase one of these ready-made wooden slat baskets for like hanging your Vanda orchids or um, some others that like to be a little bit more bare-rooted, you know, these baskets can be uh, kind of expensive, especially if you get one that's larger in size. But 
If you're a tiny bit handy with um, a saw and small nails and maybe a staple gun, you can actually make these for yourself. Now, I have never done this, but I think that I could, uh, given the proper tools. And you know, it doesn't have to be this perfect design. You could just have the boards and they could stick out on the ends. You wouldn't have to worry about all of this rounding on the wood necessarily, um, as long as you had a way to staple and or nail the boards together and then hammer in um, a little hanging hook. You could make baskets. Now I've put a link below um, to some wood pieces that you might use for that purpose if you're interested in building your own baskets. I think it would be really easy to do. But my best, um, I think, creative trick for dealing with these baskets is something else that I want to show you. Because what will happen is, is that if you choose to put any kind of media in here, even if it's large pieces of bark or charcoal or cork or sphagnum, you know, it's going to want to fall out of the bottom because these gaps are pretty large. Um, so one of the things that I like to do is I like to save and reuse the little mesh sleeves that they put on wine bottles when you purchase wine or, you know, other bottles. When they put them in the bag for you, they put this little sleeve over the bottle so they don't clank together. Well, I save these and then what you can do is split them open so that they're no longer a sleeve but then they become flat. So just cut it like that and then you will end up with a flat piece like this and you can either put one layer of this in the bottom of the wooden slat basket or you can put two layers in the bottom and then whatever media you add here will be prevented from falling through. I wish I had figured this out before I did all of my own band baskets. Okay, so the last segment of this video is filled with a lot of little detailed goodies. Um, the first thing I think that I want to talk about is crocking the bottom of your orchid pots. Now, traditionally, that term crocking meant taking shards of broken clay pots and layering them in the bottom so that uh, the drainage would not be blocked when you watered your plant. And crocking, when it was translated to orchid growing, um, didn't necessarily mean shards of clay pots or broken pots in the bottom of your orchid pot, but it just meant putting something more chunky in the bottom of your orchid pot so that the drainage holes would not be plugged up as you watered the plant. And it also provides a little bit of extra air space down in the bottom. So when we crock uh, an orchid pot, we would typically use large pieces of bark or possibly some pieces of cork and um, that would be the way that would be accomplished. Now, if you read some um, recent studies on regular houseplants, not orchids, but regular houseplants, you know, they have found that crocking is actually a crock and it really does not do much because the root system of regular houseplants will, you know, draw the soil down and the bottom of the pot will become clogged anyway. I don't think that's as big of a problem with orchids because their root systems are so different. So I still crock the bottom of many of my orchid pots. And, you know, instead of using uh, extra large bark, which can be expensive, or instead of purchasing cork pieces, which can be expensive, you can do that in a couple of different ways. So let me kind of walk through that. The first way that you can do that is to just save some of these styrofoam packing peanuts. Um, these work perfectly well um, in the bottom of orchid pots and often you will see um, 
commercial growers use pieces of styrofoam or things like this uh, to fill up the bottom of the orchid pot. So if you save these, you can use them. The other thing that you can save and use to crock in the bottom of your pots are just plastic lids from water bottles. You know, you can put five or six of seven or seven of these at the bottom of a pot and that can work as a crocking method. Um, the other thing that you can do, and I had a, have a lot of different uh, uses for wine corks, but you can use wine corks in the bottom of really large pots. And if you're really, really careful, you can take a pair of heavy duty scissors or a knife and you can even cut these in half or cut them into thirds and use this to crock in the bottom of your orchid pot. So, you know, that's, that's a way to, um, you know, just reuse some things that you have around the house. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can buy cork um, in a less expensive way than the uh, cork pieces that you get from orchid supply stores. So I'll have a link for that in the bottom of the video. Okay, now the next um, thing that you can do is you can just use, in a pinch, you can use um, bamboo skewers from the kitchen as stakes for your bloom spikes. These um, would need to be replaced uh, from one time to the next because they are just wood and they will deteriorate. And so you would not want to reuse these. But they're handy because they already have points on the end, so they're easy to push down into the pots. And, uh, you know, in a pinch, you can use these to stake uh, an orchid. And then the other thing that I like to use wine corks for is either straightening or supporting a plant in a different way. So let me show you a few examples with these orchids here that are in front of the camera. Um, this one is a perpetual leaner. And I really don't care for Phalaenopsis orchids to lean too much um, when they're in my bay window because they start to take up more space that way. So I took a cork and I kind of propped this one up to keep it from leaning over to the side. As it develops roots um, in this way, the plant will eventually straighten and hold itself on its own. And those corks are soft, so if you're careful about it, you won't damage your plant at all. And there's another one that I have that was beginning to turn into a leaner. It didn't have a good root system to begin with, but um, I put a cork right here to hold the plant more upright. And now that it has developed more roots, I can probably remove the cork and the plant no longer leans because the root system is now holding it in place without the cork being there. Okay, and then, um, this little orchid, you can see that I used um, a packing peanut under here to support the bloom spike. It was beginning to rest on the rim of the pot, and so I put a piece of um, styrofoam there to support that bloom spike. You could also use uh, a cork piece for that if it fit. And then, um, you know, these little butterfly clips are really handy for clipping, you know, a, a bloom spike to a stake. But if you run out of these or can't find these or have to order these and, you know, wait for them to be delivered, an alternative that works is to just go to your um, nearby pharmacy and buy a hair clip because these hair clips are actually shaped in the same kind of way. There's a space here where the uh, stake and the spike could go. There's a hinge where you can wrap it around, just like one of these butterfly clips. And, you know, I don't know really about the, the difference in the cost between these, but these are a lot easier to buy and find rather than having to wait on, you know, getting a butterfly clip. And then the very, very, very last thing are these little hair pins. Uh, I did a video about a week or so ago where I showed you how to use a paper clip to hold down aerial roots in a Phalaenopsis repot so that it would have a chance to send out branching roots down into the media. Well, in addition to the paper clip, if you have some of these hair clips on hand, you can push these down to hold roots down. 
one little tip that makes it a bit more secure is to bend back the ends of the hair clip like this and when you push it down into the media it will be a bit more secure all right so this ends our video of budget-friendly ideas for orchid supplies I really hope you learn something new, some idea that you want to try in your own orchid collection. Uh, please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new or just enjoyed it. And the subscribe button will be coming up in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Thanks so much for watching and if you choose to use one of the links to shop down in the description below, a double thanks. Talk to you next time.